So hello everyone, so today I'm gonna present my PhD work uh, during these three years. Uh, so it's multi-model fusion for short iterances applied on biometrics identification and student engagement detection. So this PhD was done under the supervision of Professor David Rousseau and Professor Pajman Rassi at the University of Angers. So let's start. So the way how we perceive the world around us is multi-model. In other words, the brain <coughs> receives uh, sensory inputs such as vision, hearing, touch via uh, regions like visual, auditory and som somatosensory cortices. So this information are encoded, proceed and integrated by the brain in a multimodal way to form a coherent understanding of the environment. So as how the brain function in a uh, machine learning model, we can integrate data from various modalities such as RGB images, depth images, video, so the sequence of these images, audio or even textual. A good example about, <coughs> about uh, multimodal modality in our uh, real life application is uh, the video. So the video can be at the same time a visual modality and at the same time, uh, it can com it compound the audio modality. So to process this heterogeneous uh, data, uh, several methods in the architecture use deep learning uh, methods to combine uh, these modality and uh, <coughs> it created uh, or it improves. Uh, it have sh it has shown a significant improvement in tasks such as speaker verification, emotional recognition, or even deep fake detection. However, there is uh, a gap that still not be uh, stated by uh, by the literature is when we work on short uh, duration inputs, such as brief iterances or video clips, so which can uh, which can pose a significant challenge to model to extract meaningful features across the modalities. In the literature, sometimes they have used a high computational cost to process multiple uh, these multiple modality under short iterances circumstances which cannot be really scalable in uh, real world uh, conditions. So this thesis tackles the challenge of short duration iterances in multimodal analysis through uh, three key applications by proposing novel modality methodology sorry to handle short duration inputs in the context of authentication or biometrics identification. So the, in this application, there are some limitations due to limited, uh, limited data from brief inputs. Another challenge that can be that uh, that uh, that is posed for this application is deepfake. So we will work on deepfake detection on short segments of audio or audio or uh, of video or audio. <coughs> because sometimes the, the the word changes can uh, drastically affect the meaning and require precise analysis. So moving toward unsupervised multimodal uh, learning, we're going to explore the student engagement uh, detection by working on real-time analysis for short physiological signals such as uh, heart rate signal and behavioral signals such as emotional facial expression that is very critical for adaptive feedback in education. Now let's start with the first uh, chapter that will be f dedicated on bridging between unimodality and multimodality. So here we're gonna work on two subparts. The first subpart will be on unimodal biometrics, voice-based identification under short iterances. Then we work on uh, multimodal multimodality benefits by exploring multimodal biometrics identification audio and depth video under short iterances. So before tackling the first subpart, we should uh, specify uh, two main keywords that is uh, or uh, one major keyword that is short iterances. So under unimodality we only work on uh, less than three seconds iterances. But when we have 
the two modalities we're gonna work on at the word level or the English word level that is between 200 milliseconds and one seconds so now let's <coughs> let's move on to biometric voice based identification so in the literature several methods were, were proposed and to end methods where we take the raw signal directly and feed it to a known network and make uh, the classification to identify speakers so these methods are uh, require computational costs uh, and uh, heavy they are heavy and uh, require more computational costs the other methods that are based on handcrafted methods so where we uh, where uh, the signal pass by a pre-processing steps and then fed to uh, a neural network then uh, to classify speakers so these handcrafted methods or these pre-processing methods can be male frequency substrum coefficient that are based on male scale triangle features that look the same as the auditory uh, system of the human male spectrogram or at the end so this is the transform that we will focus on wavelet scattering transform that was proposed by Stefan Mala on 2012 and this is based on male scaled Gabor filters and its architectures look the same as uh, Sienna so it has many uh, many scales so for this uh, application we proposed this architecture where we feed wavelet scattering transform coefficients or WST and then here we classify speakers so to evaluate our architecture <coughs> we take uh, the famous uh, data set that uh, handle short iterances that is a TMIT data set so this data set is a corpus of English sentences sub sampled at 16 kilohertz and it compound 462 uh, speakers so now let's compare our methods to uh, the other methods that are in the literature so here we have uh, we can see that our methods com uh, shows a competitive performance or identification accuracy compared to the methods in the literature but shows 22 times less parameters uh, than these models so we can conclude that we proposed uh, a less computational cost architecture for audio short iterances now another perspective is to see the benefits of multimodality so our question is how to fuse effectively multimodal short iterances with less computational cost applied on biometrics identification so in the previous subparts we worked on audio modality but here we're gonna fuse it with another modality that is lips depth video so here we only focus on the lips because it's highly correlated with the audio modality so for that we proposed a late fusion based architecture where we process each modality apart then we make a self attentional model that balance between the information that come from each modality <coughs> and then make uh, a classification at the end so now let's uh, make uh, our concentration on the audio modality so for the audio uh, model we consider three main architectures that is uh, our previous architecture with two other architecture in the literature and we apply it on TCDTMIT that is a data set of 59 Irish speakers reading, uh, di reading different sentences or English sentences so here we can clearly see that our methods perform better than the other methods but the X vector architecture presents less overfitting but 15 times less in terms of processing types so for the audio model we're gonna adopt this architecture for uh, to extract the meaningful features from the audio modality now let's move on to the other modality that is in our architecture that is lips depth video so as we know a video is a 3d data that is composed from 
uh, 2D that is spatial and a time axis. So several methods in the literature use excessive computational costs such as 3D CNNs or it process each frame uh, alone and then <coughs> and then it gives a, a feature vector that uh, encompass uh, the information that come from each frame and then it process by LSTM uh, by LSTM um, architecture. So these methods present a high computational cost. So our uh, our methods or our novel methods will be to split the video into three 2D views. In other words, or to be more explicit, so here we can see the video as a sequence of special view that is x y or a sequence across the x-axis of temporal vertical view or horizontal uh, temporal view that is across the y-axis. So for that we will process each modality or each view by a 2D ResNet where we get feature extraction. Then we concatenate the, the features vector that come from each view and we make a self-attentional model to balance between the information that come from each view to have one feature vector that encompass all the information that come from the lips depth video. So to evaluate our architecture, <coughs> we uh, choose to, uh, we, want, we want to work on audio depth video data sets. So the most famous one that, and, uh, that is widely available is Kinect Digit Dataset that is compound uh, that is uh, that uh, encompass 30 English figures reading digits from 0 to 9. But the issue, however, the issue is that the most datasets in the literature have only RGB face and audio modality. So what we propose is a pre-processing method where we use a pre-trained face depth estimation network to get the depth maps. Then we use a lips ext extraction to only focus on the lips part and word segmentation to assure, uh, assure the, uh, the, uh, the short duration uh, conditions. Now let's see the first, uh, the first uh, data set that is TCDTMIT. So it's an audio RGB face video data set that is a uh, compound of uh, 59 Irish speakers near reading English uh, sentences. So here after applying our pre-processing methods, we, ge we, we get lips depth estimation from lips RGB video and the audio modality and we assure that it's only short iterances. So here we have 800 milliseconds. Now let's move on to another data set that is uh, recorded in real world life condition. Uh, it is called Vox Celeb 2 that is taken from uh, YouTube and it has 6K celebrities from different nationalities. So after the pre-processing uh, methods, we get this lips depth estimation and uh, the audio modality will to assure uh, the, the short iterances condition. So now let's uh, evaluate the uh, our multi-view architecture or our architecture that is applied for only lips depth video. So here we have, uh, we can clearly see that uh, if we see all the views, the special one have a significant uh, performance compared to the other views that are uh, temporal. So to explain that, the, f the fact is that uh, the visual uh, traits of a person have more information than the behavioral threat. But when we make the fusion with, uh, with the self-attention model at the end, we get a better accuracy compared to uh, all the views. In other words, we have exploited the, the special temporal information of the video. So now let's move on to uh, comparing the unimodality and multimodality. So here, if we take a look to each modality, we can see that it performs less than multimodal fusion. 
In other words, the multimodal fusion enhances accuracy and exploits uh, the information that come or the complementarity that come from each modality. So here, even when we have less accuracy uh, at the depth video, we get a better accuracy when fused with the audio and uh, uh, vice versa. So to conclude, we have proposed an effective uh, way or less computational cost uh, to improve speaker identification under real world condition by using the multimodality benefits. We exploited uh, the spatial temporal information of a video by proposing a 2D decomposition where we use 2D ResNets applied on each view and then uh, fuse it at the features level. So another perspective to reduce more uh, the complexity is to replace 2D ResNet by lightweight CNN such as MobileNet or TinyML. So now let's stay in the realm of multimodality or supervised multimodality. Let's move to another challenge that, uh, that is on the biometrics identification, that is deepfake generation methods. So in this chapter, we're going to divide it in two subparts where we're going to fine tune our previous architecture for audiovisual defect detection. Then we go to propose a comprehensive multimodal method to detect uh, deepfake audiovisual videos. So before attacking uh, this chapter, we, pr we present uh, some uh, deepfake methods. So here we can see this is a deepfake generation methods of a video and this is the real one. The same for the audio, so this is the fake one and this is the real one. As we can see at the naked eye we cannot make, uh, uh, make a, a difference or distinguish, it cannot be distinguishable at the naked eye. So our objective is how can we detect short iterances deepfake videos with less computational cost. So to tackle this objective, we propose two different methods. So the first one will be based on our previous architecture where we only uh, change the output to have real or fake the audio video instead of using the, uh, the, the speaker identities. So each modality will be processed alone and uh, fused at the features level. Another method that can uh, be used and it's more understandable is the uh, the late fusion at the decision level. So here we use uh, we propose two um, two uh, handcrafted features for lips RGB video and uh, for the audio modality. Then we make a decision and at decision level we um, we evaluate the decision that come from each modality to make uh, the decision on the whole audio video uh, multimodality. Uh, so now let's, as we uh, present um, the two main methods that will be uh, tackled in this chapter, we present the data sets that we will evaluate our, uh, our architecture on. So the first one will be fake avcelep that is uh, composed of uh, four classes where we have a real video, real audio with the uh, different uh, with different uh, uh, composition, fake, real, uh, real, fake, etc. So the fake audio and the fake video were generated by uh, methods such as speak verification to text to speech face swap, FFS scan or wave, wave, uh, wave, wave to lips and uh, etc. So let's take a look of uh, some sample from this data set. So here we have fake lips RGB video and uh, fake audio that come from this uh, data set. Another data set that we will work on is the fake Timati. So this is a data set that comes from uh, or that is generated from a uh, uh, known data set with TMIT. So here they used, the authors used face swap methods 
to create 320 fake videos with real audios so here we have only the visual modality that is uh, that is fake and not uh, the audio modality so now let's take a look uh, some uh, some samples from this uh, data set so here we have the real lips RGB video that come from VTMIT and this is the face swap methods of fake lips RGB video and as we can see this is the real audio associated to uh, to this video so now as we presented uh, our data set we should say that our experiments will only focus on the lips part and the video are chunks uh, into segments ranging from 200 milliseconds to 600 milliseconds and one second to assure the short uh, the uh, short iterances uh, conditions so now let's evaluate our uh, first architecture or our deep learning architecture compared to the state of, or to, uh, to the literature uh, methods that is based on static uh, that is statistic based uh, static based method called exception net so here as we can see when we uh, when modify when we modify the uh, the duration of the videos we get a better accuracy in other word uh, in other better identification accuracy in other words we have managed to exploit the spatial temporal uh, information to uh, to detect the anomalies so the spatial or temporal anomalies because this one is it, it detects only the special anomalies because it's uh, static ba static base and as we can see even at short duration iterances it outperform the uh, the methods proposed in the literature now as we proposed the deep learning architecture or we fine-tune our deep learning methods let's move on uh, to to uh, a comprehensive method so our objective is how can we detect deep fake short duration uh, videos by only using handcrafted base method so for that let's make a reminder here we're gonna process each modality apart by using uh, some handcrafted features that we will propose we make a decision and at decision level we fuse between the two decision to make the uh, uh, the the final decision on uh, the whole video so now let's begin with the first modality that is the audio modality so here let's consider the audio signal as um, as X so we take the positive sample and the negative sample then we apply WST transform on each component and from now on we consider X as the WST of the the raw signal XP the, po uh, the WST of the positive samples and XN the WST of the negative samples so our objective is to lower bound the similarity between the WST transform of these components so our focus or our concentration will be uh, to uh, to look at the person or the temporal person, co uh, person coefficient on uh, the WST ST transform, uh, transform of these components. So now let's take a look of uh, the visual enhancement of the contracts contrast of our methods. So here we have the WST of real video, uh, real audio, and WST of fake audio. So as we can see, we cannot make a distinction between the two uh, the two audios because we have only uh, just two differences that can that can we make. But when we split two positive and negative sample, the enhancement of the differences or the contrast between uh, the real and the fake audio it increases so in other words we manage to uh, to enhance the contrast between uh, real audio and the the fake audio so now as we present the visual aspect of our methods let's move on to evaluated 
uh, with other methods in the literature so here <coughs> as we can see our methods perform less uh, in terms of uh, compared to x vectors methods but when we go to uh, late uh, to uh, to a really short iterances that are 200 milliseconds for example we manage to have a competitive performance under short iterances scenarios and even for others but here we have a better performance so in other words we propose a uh, method that is understandable and at the same time can be interpretable so as we propose the, the audio modality now let's move on to um, to the other modality in the video that is the visual one so for that we're gonna consider only the lips rgb video then we make special derivation and then uh, apply discrete cosine transform to get the, uh, the frequency information and our focus is to track the person coefficient or the uh, uh, the person coefficient on the special uh, on the special axis between a frame and its uh, the previous one so to uh, to visualize the the variation of this uh, of these coefficients in a, in a temporal way we choose to use uh, the standard the temporal mean and the temporal standard deviation so here as we can see when we don't have a special derivation on v or on the video we have an overlapping between the two groups but when we apply uh, the derivation or when we start to add more or uh, move the energy toward high special frequency two clusters are uh, they are they started to uh, be distinguishable so in other words moving energy toward high special frequency can enhance the, the, the deep uh, the visual deep fake detection so as we can see we have two separable cluster uh, one way is we may use SVM uh, super vector machine or other machine learning classifiers to uh, to put classification between those, these two groups or we can only look at the slope because if we see uh, the slope are really different so this slope is uh, what we call the coefficient of variation that is standard deviation so when we plot for only 20, uh, 20 videos 20 fake and 20 real, video, uh, real videos we get <coughs> A threshold that we c c uh, that we can set on this uh, parameter that is one after uh, after several uh, uh, validation uh, experiences. So here we only have a, s a threshold to set to make a distinction between what is fake and what is real. We should specify that this uh, uh, that this data set is only uh, you they only use face swap methods and at the same time the head pose was uh, zero head pose so uh, now let's move on to evaluate our methods to uh, to the other methods in the literature so here we have uh, our previous architecture that we propose uh, that's uh, use the late fusion uh, order the 2d decomposition so as we can see uh, our methods perform or have a has a competitive performance under short iterances scenarios and at the same time it is sequence level based detection compared to exception that, that is only image level based or static st static based uh, detection methods we all we should specify also that no trainable parameters were needed only a threshold to set and at the same time our methods is more understandable and interpretable so to conclude this part we have managed to fine-tune our previous architecture for audiovisual deepfake detection under short duration uh, iterances we have also proposed an, interp an interpretable and understandable methods 
based on late fusion at the decision level where we t where we took each modality apart and we extract some meaningful features for each modality and we make the fusion at the decision level now staying in the realm of multimodal uh, multimodal learning let's move on to another aspect that is unsupervised unsupervised multimodal uh, learning so here we're gonna work on a real world life application that is students engagement detection so in this chapter we're gonna divide in two subparts where we design for the first time a novel multimodal data set that encompass four modalities designed for student engagement detection uh, and then we're gonna explore uh, a preliminary pipeline for multimodal student engagement detection on this data set so now let's start in the students engagement field the cur current research relies heavily on self reports where we ask students at the end of each session to give their impression on the um, uh, on the teaching session so this remains subjective why because the emotional intelligence uh, of each student can variates so their way to perceive uh, to perceive uh, the the session can vary from a student to another and at the same time it doesn't give or it doesn't capture the local time engagement it's uh, just at the end we ask and uh, it makes uh, on the whole session and not local time uh, time engagement so to solve this uh, to tackle this issue multimodal machine learning has emerged as a tool to understand the complex human behavior by integrating physiological signals such as heart rate signals brain signals uh, muscle signals and behavioral signals such as emotional facial expression so these mod modalities or this way to treat uh, to um, to track the student engagement is more objective because it gives a local engagement and at the same time it gives the emotional state of the person however in the literature physiolog physiological signal acquisition relies on expensive tools for example uh, 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 ecg uh, to take ecg sh signal they need uh, they need to put students to uh, in a laboratory and uh, and to use instruments that are uh, expensive so this in other words these databases are often produced in simulated environments so our objective to uh, tackle these two challenges is how to identify student engagement on short iterances um, using multimodal wearable sensors in educational settings in real world uh, educational settings are not in the lab as it was uh, done in the literature so here for the first time we propose uh, or we work on constructing we worked on constructing norocam data set that encompass four modalities heart rate signal that will encompass the physiological signals emotional facial expression that encompasses the behavioral signal student self report that's uh, that is more uh, a global view on each session and observation notes by the didactic researcher that were made during each session so we uh, this data set was constructed on uh, tracking uh, students on a whole semester of french foreign language lessons there were there were uh, 16 sessions each one lasts two hours and 40 uh, minutes and we uh, as we assure that uh, the sensor that we use were wearable and low cost to make our data sets reproducible we should state that for the modality that is student self report so student self reports modality we followed an established uh, protocol that was tested already on foreign language classes 
English and French by multiple studies. So now let's take a look of on our dataset. So here we ask each student to put the oximeter on uh, on uh, his on her finger, and then we make and uh, this is for the physiological signal that is heart rate signal. It gives uh, the concentration of the oxygen uh, in the blood under the same time the heart rate signal. We are more focused on the heart rate signal and the camera that will capture all uh, the whole class but we track each uh, student alone to to process the emotional facial expression based uh, based on uh, on his or or on her face so our objective is to um, to 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 do the student engagement detection or short iterances for three students why three students? Because due to presence and due to even um, privacy, because we ask students before to make um, to, to to sign uh, to, to to sign some uh, papers for uh, privacy things. So we kept only the students that are interested on this. So due to the this limited number of students, but we have very long sessions. We want to use unsupervised multimodal learning on each student alone so to see the variation on each student alone and not put all students in the same data set and treat and uh, process the process or the data that come from each student and then fuse them and uh, uh, treat treat them as a global um, information but we want to see at each student level the variation uh, compared to uh, the um, compared to the uh, to, to, to the whole uh, or to the signal of uh, to, to the global um, to, to the global emotion of the of the person so now to to see little bit uh, uh, or to enhance or to explain our uh, our idea is now we want to see uh, the heart rate signal so this is the heart rate signal of a student across a session and here we have some peaks of some abnormal peaks or some outliers so our question is do these outliers correlate with specific time of student engagement that will refer to as abnormal moments so to respond this question so it's more an investigation and it's more an exploration of a preliminary pipeline we will explore uh, this preliminary pipeline where we frame the hr signal and then we extract our hr features and we make a clustering of uh, two groups where the outliers are considered to be as abnormal moments same for face tracking but at the frame level to have a precise detec detection of transient uh, dynamic and subtle, subtle emotional variations then we make the same clustering using gmm uh, gaussian mixture models then we get the face abnormal moments that's ca that are the outliers on uh, on this on the data that come from these students and the decision level it is based on the availability of the modality so now let's uh, process or let's explore the features that are extracted from the first modality that is heart rate so as we know heart rate signal is a time series so as it is a time series we want to do a framing but no specific duration of physiological uh, responses was given but most common that were used were uh, between 30 seconds and 300 seconds so in our experiments we set this framing between 60 seconds to 210 um, seconds with an overlapping of 50 percent so these hyperparameters can be changed especially the overlapping uh, in the future uh, works on this data set so the hr signal features that we uh, that we used for um, uh, for the heart rate modality is the mean of 
HR variation or a heart rate variation, standard deviation, the absolute speed and the absolute acceleration of the, uh, and uh, their associated normalized uh, values of the HR signals. So now let's take a look of uh, the distribution of these features or three HR features space of these three students. So as we can see the distribution between uh, from student to another variates. So that's why we use on each student alone and not fuse all the data and then we make a clustering but we consider each student alone and we make a clustering. So after applying GMM clustering, so here the blue ones refer to the abnormal moments or the significant moments that uh, that is for each for each student. So to evaluate uh, the GMM clustering, so we use the silhouette score to see uh, which what are the features that give that are more uh, that are more significant to clustering. So here we can see that uh, the contribution come majorly from the speed and the acceleration and then and their associated normalized values which is in, co in correlation or uh, in correlation with the, the literature of emotion cl classification that gives uh, this feature as the best uh, the best contribution to the emotion classification so after presenting the heart rate uh, signal uh, processing, now let's move on to the emotional facial expression modality. So we have worked on the, the frame level. So we use a pre-trained uh, VIT transform on emotional recognition and we apply GMM clustering to detect the emotional facial expression, uh, significant moments or abnormal moments. So now, let's validate the uh, the um, these moments that come from uh, these two modalities by uh, comparing to uh, to observation notes that were made by the didactic researchers so here we can see an accordance between uh, our hr clustering methods and the observation made by the didactic researcher in the emotional facial expression side we can we can see still see an accordance for the two first students but not the lo um, the last one we can explain that by the fact that social masking where we uh, emotional facial expression sometimes they don't show um, a better emotional state of the person compared to the physiological signals but when we m use the decision fusion with the observation uh, notes of the didactic, didactic researcher we improve the the local student engagement detection, and uh, that's why we can see that um, adding multimodality can enhance uh, the the student engagement detection accuracy. So to conclude, we have proposed a prelim preliminary study on unsupervised multimodal student engagement uh, detection with uh, four modalities: that is self-report, HR modality that is more physiological, emotional facial expression modalities that are the two for local of student engagement detection and observation notes by the didactic researcher. We have managed to cross-reference these detected moments with, uh, de uh, moments with the didactic res research expert observation a possible perspective is to extend this dataset for other subjects because we uh, we worked more on foreign lang language courses and on a large number of students. So as a perspective, we may associate uh, student self-reports with global abnormal moments in uh, future work. So to conclude, the main challenges that uh, was that were treated uh, in this PhD is handling short duration uh, inputs from multimodal multimodal data uh, and the problem of using high computational costs. So here we make we made the first contribution where we proposed light deep learning uh, model for short iterances based on multi-view fusion and self-attention mechanism. 
We propose a shallow learning model for short iterances based on wavelet scattering transform and discrete Gaussian transform and decision level fusion for defect uh, detection uh, uh, application. We have also proposed uh, non supervised multi model analysis for short uh, iterances for engagement detection. Or we explore uh, we explore a non supervised multi model analysis for short duration short iterances for engagement detection. And we also propose a new multi model uh, database with four modalities that is designed for student engagement detection. So our perspective is to optimize multi model fusion strategy by using, for example, hybrid fusion where we uh, can uh, make fusion at each extraction at uh, its ex extraction level to uh, exploit uh, in a uh, in a correlation to uh, make an interaction between uh, modalities at each extraction level we may use a cross domain uh, transfer learning where we uh, try to uh, tr try to use um, a transfer learning techniques between domains to improve generalization and reduce time trainings such as uh, time such as transfer component analysis to make it scalable and real-time deployment we may optimize uh, the model deployment by exploring techniques such as uh, model distillation and uh, quantization such as tiny ml where we uh, train a teacher model and then we use a student uh, model that is uh, with less parameters and the calibration that come from the teacher model and uh, apply it on the uh, real life uh, da uh, real world data sets so during this phd we make we made a publication that are uh, journal uh, three journal articles and uh, uh, three others in the proceedings so i want to thank all the jury members for taking time to review and evaluate my phd and i want also to thank all the colleagues for their support and knowledge sharing this PhD were carry was carried out in partnership between the Laris Laboratory at the University of Angers, the ESEP School, supported by the Angers Loire Metropole. Uh, and uh, thank you for your attention. And ha I'm happy to take your question.